live stream on Facebook. Oh, I already had that ready. Go live. And start to add knit all. And focus on. Could you let yeah. in um, Carolina? Because she said uh, she's waiting. What name has she got on, on her thing? I've left everybody in already. A nice beggar. Beggar. No, there, there isn't such a name in the in the waiting room. Yeah, she's in the waiting room, yeah. No, there is no one with that name in the waiting room. Hi, Tanya. Hi, how are you? Good, welcome. Thank you. Nice to <laughs> see you. Uh, my laptop was used by my husband, so that's why the name was like my husband's name. That's why maybe you misunderstanding. I'm sorry for that. No worries. Welcome. Mm
So, dear ladies and gentlemen, the music stopped and I start with the greetings, dear friends and participants. Welcome to our Women's Federation for World Peace International UN Office Vienna Meet and Greet number six gathering. Initiated and driven by our Filipino colleague, Mrs. Merle Blaschke Sokila. My name is Maria Riel, and I am UN Office Di Vienna Director. Our team and myself are very happy to welcome you as our friends to share your ideas and activities with us as our vision is to work together as women, as mothers, daughters, sisters, and wives with our family to create a global family rooted in the sustainable peace and well-being for all participants. First of all, I am happy to greet and introduce our special friend, Her Excellency, Madam Ambassador of Republic of Philippines to Austria, Mrs. Evangelina Lourdes Arroyo Bernas. As she is very busy and today evening she could not participate in person, she sent it her message to us via video. Please, Lily, can you show the message? Good evening. Chris God, uh, thank you very much to Frau Rail and to Frau Merle Sokilia for always inviting the Philippine Embassy to attend uh, the WFWP meet and greets and all of your side events at our UN um, meetings. For the Philippines, it is very important that we have these types of engagement, particularly for women and the youth. The Philippines is very strong in our commitment to including women and the youth in nation building. So, thank you for doing in ensuring that the is the center of our development. Thank you very much, and I hope that tonight's meet and greet will be fruitful. See you again next time. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ambassador. It is wonderful to meet you always. You can listen very carefully and you have, we share with you all the projects. The situation in islands is different and is, as is our in continent where we have very near our neighbors. So we have different challenges, but we are united in the same vision to create a world of happiness and peace for all of us. Next, I am happy to invite Mrs. Merle Blaschke Sequila to read the words of our international president of Women's Federation for World Peace, Mrs. Mori Kohori. She lives in Japan, is full Japanese, and is also guiding the Women's Federation in Japan and coordinating more than 100 projects worldwide. She is traveling a lot and beyond, and because of her situation, she wrote some message to us. And Mrs. Merle Blaschke Sequila is ready to read this message for us. Please, Merle, read it. Muted. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Women and youth working together for a more resilient and sustainable future for generations to come. Part three. Distinguished guests, 
Greetings from Tokyo, Japan. My name is Moriko Hori. I'm the president of Women's Federation for World Peace International. It is my honor to greet you in this wonderful event. Intergenerational communication refers to the exchange of information between people of different generations. It is crucial for individuals of various age groups to understand and cooperate with each other. In today's multi-generational workplace, effective communication between different generations is essential to understand and appreciate each other's values and perspectives. For instance, older individuals possess a wealth of experience and knowledge while younger people bring fresh perspectives mm -hmm. and strong grasp of technology by sharing these insights across generations a broader perspectives can be achieved. Of course, there are certain challenges in integrational communication. These challenges can be broadly categorized in two main areas, the generation gap and communication difficulties and changes in communication due to endpoints of technology. To address these issues, it is crucial for each generation to understand the perspective and values of the other and to learn appropriate communication styles. This can be achieved through training in communication skills. In order to achieve effective intergenerational communication, I would like to address Three points. First, empathy is important. By understanding the other person's position and point of view, we can create a better dialogue. This is a part of a communication skill called assertiveness, which involves acknowledgement and understanding the opinions and feelings of others while respecting your own. Secondly, consensus building is crucial for reconciling disagreements between different generations. To build consensus, it is necessary to respect each other's opinions and establish a common understanding through consultation. Lastly, it is also important for all generations to have a common language and skills through reskilling. Reskilling refers to the process by which employees learn new skills to adapt to organizational changes and support sustainable growth. Lead me share my experience as the president of Women's Federation for World Peace Japan. WFWP Japan has 500 chapters and each chapter encompasses a wide range of generations. Older individuals and young people consistently work together. Despite some challenges, those in their 70s and older serve as senior advisors supporting the current generation. The younger generation contributes by providing digital skills. Through their interactions, the older generation learns new ways of thinking and acquire new skills. Senior members are learning to operate Zoom meetings and use various apps with the younger generation serving as instructors. The secret to success lies in sharing the same vision and mission. This is achieved through consensus building, which involves respecting each generation by empathizing with others and understanding their positions and viewpoints. 
we can create meaningful dialogue. Intergenerational communication is the key to utilizing communication technologies and digital tools that foster empathy and understanding. By learning through concrete examples, we can put theory into practice for integrational communication to be successful. It is important to respect the knowledge and experience of different generations and provide opportunities for mutual understanding. This approach helps us build better organizations, communities, and societies. I strongly believe this meeting will bring many insights and inspiration for all generations. Thank you so much for listening. Yeah, thank you very much, Merlet. It is nice to be united, with, even with Tokyo. <laughs> so technology make it possible, and uh, we like to to be together with our families, with our grandchildren. Even I am confronted every day <laughs> with the situation, at least on weekends mainly. So. Thank you very much for the inspirational words. Now is the time to listen to our speakers. And I give the floor to our dear colleague, Youth Representative of Women's Federation for World Peace Europe and Netherlands, Ms. Kiongin van de Ven Oliveira. She lives in, Amst in Amsterdam, in Holland. Please, dear Kiongin, the floor is yours. Thank you for Thank coming. You. <laughs> Thank you, dear Maya. Thank you for the nice introduction. And welcome everyone. Uh, welcome dear colleagues and friends. We're very happy and delighted that you're all here with us tonight. And we're very excited to uh, be able to present this platform of the meet and greet alongside the constructive dialogues at the UN in Vienna um to offer this platform to showcase amazing projects done by amazing people as you might have noticed there uh, are uh, the bios of the speakers are put in the chat so uh, due to time we can't introduce everyone uh properly in this way uh, so yeah please uh, take some time to read those and um yes we're very excited and uh, the first speakers for tonight are mother and daughter, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mariezel Rojas and her uh, daughter, Sara Giselle Rojas. And the uh, mom is in science and the daughter is in business and fashion. And uh, they represent the European network of Filipino diaspora in Austria and they will both share a bit about their projects. So let us welcome them. And ladies, the floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. If you can allow us to share a screen, please, so that we can share our presentation. Lily. Sorry, let me see. Something about technology. Hold on, we're just getting everything sorted so we can share the screen. Um, hold on, hold on. Sorry, it's taking a bit of time. No worries, we will get there. <laughs> we have just a moment. We are, we have tested this, so we know it's going to work, but just hold on until we can, sorry, say Rishti. Okay, hold on. I just need to go here, share screen. This one, can you see our screen? It's coming. We've got the panel on the side. We've got the it's panel on the side. Yeah, just going to present presentation mode. Yep. No, just a moment. We'll just, we're ready to present. And can you see our slides? Perfect, yep. 
Okay, I think we're set. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for inviting us to participate tonight. Of course, kudos to the Women's Federation for World Peace for hosting meaningful events such as this one. It is so good to see you all tonight, coming from how I see it, different parts of the world, different continents, and different time zones. It's truly such an honor and a privilege to be part of this online event, since I can also share this with my mom. Mm -hmm. It has been such a long time since Sarah and I were together in an event like this. Mm -hmm. We started moderating back when she was 11 years old. And we always enjoyed working together, even more so now that we can talk about a topic that's so close to our hearts. So we've titled our presentation, as you can see, It Begins Within. And in the process of coming up with our content, we figured that we wanted to use one of the United Nations Sustainability, Sustainable Development Goals as our guidelines. Another mishap. Yeah. Okay. No, back. Okay. I think I'll handle the technical okay, stuff. Handle, and he's, she's going to handle the technology part. So the goal we want to dive into today is the sustainable development goal number three on good health and well-being. While doing our research on it, we discovered that this SDG deals mainly with the physical health and not really so much on mental health. Hence our wish to focus on it. Mm -hmm. So what is mental health? Well, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It affects how we think, feel, and act, and it also helps determine how we handle stress, relate to others, and make healthy choices. Mental health is important at every stage of life, from childhood and adolescence through adulthood. So after reading this definition, we were prompted to come up with our own definition of what mental health is. And we wanted to give our own take on mental health. So allow us to present two perspectives, AKA point of views or POVs on the Gen Xers mm -hmm. that's represented by me, born between the mid 1960s and early 1980s who often grew up, who grew up at a time when mental health issues were really less openly discussed and more stigmatized. Many in my generation, our generation, instinctively felt that we have to, you know, tough it up or man up. We dared not admit if we had mental health issues since these were viewed as personal weaknesses rather than medical conditions. As a result, many mental health issues remained unresolved because what was not discussed did not really exist. So traditional methods like therapy and medication were already available at that time too, but not really used due to this mindset. Our generation was more concerned about the stigma associated with mental health issues. When I heard that, I found it actually pretty interesting because it was the total opposite for me and in my eyes, also my generation as Gen Zers. From what I've seen and what I've experienced, mental health issues aren't as stigmatized as they used to be. Shame and embarrassment aren't really associated with mental health and there's no shame again in talking or admitting it. And growing up also in, like Tita Merle said, in the age of digitalization helped connect those who needed treatment, support, or community. Therapy is as, is as commonplace as going to the general practitioner. Apps and online platforms are also always available. And in my opinion, the best part is that talking about one's mental state and mental health has become more and more normalized. Well, I have to admit that Gen Z's win over Gen X when it comes to dealing with mental health issues. We may have been wiser. We may have had the best music. We may have had the best style. But if there's one thing we can learn from your generation, my dear daughter, is this. Mental health is just as important as physical health. 
and accepting it as part of us, claiming it in the first is the first step. Coming up with ways to deal with it, coping mechanisms. This is the next. I don't really know about the style or the music, if that's the best. Um, but you know, agree to disagree. Um, this is why mom and me came up with a to-do list, which covers actions that are ongoing, but also in the pipeline. They may appear simple, which indeed they are, but these little acts have helped us stay happy. Yes, because something that brings us joy when we do it is definitely a way to keeping our mental equilibrium. One is self-care, which is one of the first things my daughter taught me. I've been so busy, I usually neglect it. Just put me on a rigid skincare schedule every evening. If I don't do it, I have to pay up. 100 euro. 100 euro. <laughs> we also enjoy regular massages, spa days, and even mani-pedi. Just basically practicing self-love. because uh, And while loving oneself is important, pushing oneself is just as important. And this, this is even true to the things that we have decided to take on. Sarah, for example, enjoys pole dancing and writing poetry. Yes, I do indeed. And mom, on the other hand, fancies herself a sommelier and is planning on taking on singing lessons. But I don't know if that will be successful. Of course it will. And together we love traveling. And most importantly, we love reading books. Recently, we've also thought about decreasing our screen time, really going on a so-called social media cleanse, and also decluttering our home and our workplace. So basically less mess, meaning not too much time wasted, always on Facebook is now a no-go for us. On the other hand, for activities that we have put under the heading pipeline on the presentation that you see, we have uh, also some things that we have come up with, Sarah and I are pledging to continue to raise and spread, spread awareness about mental health and well-being. Participating in platforms in forums such as this one is a very good example to keep the conversation going. Another thing that we have had is something that we started with the European Network of Filipino, Europe, Europe, <laughs> sorry, the European Network of Filipino Diaspora, don't laugh at your poor mom, it's a tongue twister where we had um, at the annual general assembly we had here in May, where we came up with a presentation on the third culture kids, which we thought would be a good way to also talk, talk about mental health with young people. There's another thing. This early, we'd like to invite you to save the date for a hybrid event on the 10th of October, 2024. Of course, details will follow because in our research, we have found out that this is uh, mental health day. The overall uh, objective of this World Mental Health Day is, of course, to raise awareness of mental health issues around the world and to mobilize efforts in support of Mental Health Day. So save the dates. Date, please. October 10. The second one is a plan that we have to do something during the Mental Health Awareness Month. And this is still with enough time. On the 12th to the 18th of May, 2025, from all of you, we challenge you. We need partners and collaborators to come up with activities, global awareness campaigns, community events, educational initiatives, or media outreach through the Women's Federation for World Peace, with whom we would like to collaborate with. Just contact us. We're reachable on Facebook, Marizel Rojas or Sara Giselle Rojas. We have our IG accounts, Bratsy Beats and Marizel Rojas 00. And of course, by email, which you can easily get from Renate or Merle. That was a mouthful. Oh, no. I know. <laughs> it was a lot. Um, so on that note, we wanted to turn it over to you and ask you the question, what is one action you will take after today to support your own, own or someone else's mental health? And what we'd like you to do is just write it in the chat and we can look at it after the presentation. I'm sure you're all very familiar on how to use the chat feature of Zoom. So if you don't mind, and if you want to kind of interactively participate, please go on the chat and just answer. The question is, what is one action you will take after today to support your own or someone else's mental health? For Sarah and I, me, we have the big project ahead of us, October 10. And please remember, the answers you give can be an inspiration for others. It's also a reinforcement that you are doing something good 
for yourself and for others. And it is also a prompt, basically like an inspiration to, to collaborate with someone, with an organization to do something good to improve mental health and well-being. And with that, we leave you, leave you with our call for action, which is engage in self-care. We should all prioritize our mental health and encourage others to do the same. We should engage in self-care like skincare routines, seek help when help is needed, and support those around you. Next one is to amplify the message. We should break the stigma surrounding mental health by initiating conversations in our communities, organizations, in our workplace, even in our home. So we should share information, resources, and personal stories to normalize mental health discussions. And this is a call for action to the Women's Federation for World Peace and all the organizations and groups represented here tonight. One call for action is to empower women. We know that mental health challenges often disproportionately affect women. Empower women through education, economic opportunities, and supportive networks that promote emotional well-being. Another is promote policies. We know that WFWP is part of the ECOSOC. So work with policymakers to ensure mental health is a priority in public health agendas. Advocate for policies that provide adequate resources and support mental health initiatives. And finally, support services. Do advocate for better access to mental health services, especially in underserved communities. Make sure you partner with local organizations to provide counseling workshops and support group. So ladies and gentlemen, join us in making a difference. Because mind matters. Thank you so much for listening. It's uh, a pleasure to be here with you tonight. If you have questions, we're ready to answer them. And please, as a disclaimer, we have shared what is from our point of view. We're not claiming to be experts. Not at all. Not at all. And we hope that you enjoyed the presentation as much as we enjoyed preparing it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was just so great to listen to you and great points as well. Uh, Mental Health Day. I already did my part. I will promote your uh, uh your event on the 10th of October, Mental Health Day. Thank you so much, ladies, for raising awareness and this beautifully prepared presentation from uh, from several uh, yeah various generations. Thank you so much. And please, people, uh, don't remember to uh, write in the chat what your call uh, to action will be. I love that as well. Thank you so much, uh, ladies Rojas, for your presentation. Okay. Then. Thank you so much. Then we'll uh, go to our next speaker of today, of to this evening, and that is Mrs. Shruti Leka Raja Elango. Uh, she is usually based in Germany and is a doctoral researcher at the United Nations University for Peace. And she has also been a long time and very much appreciated colleague at the UN Women's Federation in Geneva. So, Shruti, Shruti, we're very happy that you can join us tonight and uh, let us hear from you. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, um, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, well? but not okay. so clear. A, bit a little funny. soft. If it's... Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I think let's try now. Um, so um, yes, so nice to meet you all. Thank you so much for inviting me. It really means a lot to meet you all. Um, I'm in India at the moment, so I might look a little bit tired because it's it's 12 in, a, in midnight, but um, it's always so nice to hear from you all. And um, thank you so much for the earlier presentation as well. Isn't it so cute and charming to listen from a mother and a daughter about intergenerational um, learning and uh, how important it is because it's, that's really how we can actually work together. And um, so, you know, my work with the Federation, I'm, I'm here today to share with you all a little bit about um, my work specifically with Women's Federation 
um, in the in this in the in the sector of uh, youth empowerment, um, intergenerational cooperation, and uh, peace building. So um, basically, um, what I observed as well, uh, working with Women's Federation was the um, was the challenge. And at the same time, the the strength in working together intergenerationally, because it's a big challenge, right? To actually, as as pleasant as it might sound, that you know, a mother and a daughter sit, uh, presenting a presentation, but the amount of uh, communication they might have had to come to the point where they are like. Okay, you need to. You're. We're gonna listen to each other. We're gonna try to work with, with each other. It's really difficult, right? So it's the same thing when it comes to working uh, with people of different generations, also with uh, different backgrounds from different cultures, and also on uh, different standpoints because. The concept of peace is, for example, different to someone of a different generation than to me or to someone who's younger than me. It, it might be very different. So, and also from where they come from, um, especially as, as Women's Federation is an international organization working with people of all different kinds of culture and targets issues of intercultural peace and um, peace between nations which are in severe uh, conflicts. It's a very, very difficult part where we had to learn to actually mediate uh, differences. So um, that's where, um, um, I mean, Women's Federation has been conducting a lot of projects for several years in different places and in different themes. But as I had joined uh, Women's Federation four years ago, uh, what I started doing with uh, the UN office in Geneva, um, with the director there in Geneva, Mrs. Carolyn Hanson, was to actually work on um, developing um, youth uh, uh, peace building forums. So what we did is we did a, a host um, a project called the Youth Peace Conference. It was an online conference that began during COVID, and we actually um, picked the issue of Israel and Palestine, and we uh, had um, invited um, young people, Israelis and Palestinians, who've never had an opportunity to actually have a dialogue with each other. So it was our first time to actually have a dialogue with each other and very young, you know, 15 years old, 16 years old, 18 and 19, who have been brought up with what they've seen and what they've heard from whoever they were able to communicate with. But they haven't really had the chance to actually talk to each other from other sides. So we, it's a two day conference where we gave them the role to be the leaders. So what would they do if they were the leaders, uh, you know, political leaders, state leaders, if they were presidents and prime ministers or foreign affair, whatever, you know, so they can actually take decisions and make uh, have an authority. So that's what we did. And we did give them um, uh, that role to play. And they had a day to actually start the negotiations to identify issues. And, uh, you know, it was very tense. It was so tense that we almost felt that it was a mistake that we hosted such a meeting because you know, you felt like you were harming them more than you were trying to do something good. But then the more they had the opportunity to open up and have a have um, uh, a, a communication and the role of us as mediators trying to under, trying to establish that nobody is here in the pure mindset and the heart to actually hurt each other. It's just a defensive and a protective nature that we humans have. And, you know, it comes out in different ways. So um, us as mediators highlighting and insisting that all that we want is prosperity, all that we want is peace, all that we want is goodness, good things. And, and it, we kept insisting on it. And the more they had the opportunity to talk to each other, what they had in the second day it was so surprising that they even agreed to as if they were leaders to even allocate the land, provide all um all support, financial support for rebuilding and everything. So it was really, really strong. 
So we did the same thing this last year in uh, Lebanon. Um, we went to Lebanon in person to host the same thing with a training in person with the young people um, um, with a more broader topic of the peace, of peace and role of women in building peace in the Middle East, which was really, really effective. And it was really a clear example uh, of how um, communication is very key. And what was very interesting in this is we had an intergenerational dialogue. So it was not just young people having a communication. It's not just a simulation amongst young people, but also intergenerational dialogue of where experienced individuals had shared their perspectives and inputs on what and on how to better understand political complexities or or how to engage with the international um cooperation and so on so these were really interesting and and this is an experience i was i i, I was asked to share with you all and i thought this is a great opportunity to share with you all and maybe we can talk later more or i would be very happy to answer questions um in the chat i know i'm uh, across five minutes but yes all that i would say is that um communication and the forums such as these um, have been very important and very uh, crucial to have dialogue and engage in uh, um, cooperation and in international cooperation in their countries. Thank you. Thank you, Shruti. Thank you. We know five minutes is a little short. Thank you so much. And uh, for explaining very clearly about the work you've been doing at UN Geneva, which is great, uh, bringing people together. And uh, yeah, nice what you also said about the intergenerational uh, realms of it and uh, yeah, mediating differences and see how people can come up with uh, constructive and uh, ways towards building more, uh, more mutual uh, inspired thoughts uh, for the world. Thank you so much, dear Shruti, all the way from India. We appreciate it very much. And uh, so we're going to go to the next speaker, uh, based in the USA, Mrs. Tanya Islam. Thank you. Very welcome, Mrs. Islam. Um, she is a researcher at the Department of World Religious and Culture and also an intern at the NGO Academy. And she has been involved with several projects on education and gender equality. And she will be speaking about um, her work. So, Mrs. Tanya, the floor is yours. Welcome. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen. So, oh, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, one of the first and and my. Uh, fellow uh, change makers, I stand before you uh, today with a heart full of hope and a vision of a better tomorrow. So our world is at a crucial uh, juncture and the need for sustainable development has never been more urgent than uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs. So uh, our collective uh, roadmap toward a future where no one is left behind. So the role of uh, women and youth as uh, uh, a researcher and activist working at the grassroots level, I have witnessed for um, firsthand the transformative power that women and youth can bring to our communities. Women often the backbone of our societies poses unique perspectives and resilience. So youth uh, with their innovative minds and uh, relentless energy are not just the leaders of tomorrow, but also the uh, change makers of today. So uh, contribution uh, uh, to the climate justice, I want to say 
uh, that uh, let's start with climate justice. Our um, uh, planet is in peril and it is our duty to protect it. Women and youth have been at the forefront of environmental movement to, uh, worldwide. So they bring innovative solution and advocate for sustainable practices that can help mitigate uh, the effects of climate change. Uh, in Bangladesh, uh, where I grew up, I have been organizing cleanup and tree planting sessions, raising awareness about reducing food wastes and promoting sustainable living. These grassroots efforts multi applied globally can significantly contribute to achieving SDGs 13 with climate action. And moving to peace and harmony, women and youth have the power to foster a culture of peace and dialogue. They are often the ones who bridge divides and build understanding within communities. In the slums and underprivileged areas where I, I have worked, women have played a very crucial role in mediating uh, conflicts and advocating for justice. Youth are also pivotal in this regard. Uh, they bring fresh perspectives to peace building and are often more uh, open to dialogue and reconciliation by empowering women and youth to take leadership role in peace processes. We can make significant studies toward achieving SDG 16, which is like peace, justice, and stroke institutions. So most favorite of my working areas is uh, promoting gender equality. And on this topic of gender equality, women and girls continue to face discrimination and violence. However, they also stand as powerful advocates for change. So my work is, uh, in grassroots communities has focused on educating children and youth about the importance of gender equality and empowering women to exchange of their destinies. So young people, especially girls, are increasingly challenging traditional norms and demanding equal opportunities. So by supporting their efforts and amplifying their voices, we contributing uh, to SDG 5, which is like uh, gender equality. So, uh, the one of the most dangerous thing is like child abuse or child harassment or gas harassment in Bangladesh. So human trafficking is a heinous crime that robs individuals of their freedom and dignity. Women and youth are crucial in this fight against uh, trafficking. Through education our, our, and awareness program, uh, uh, we can empower communities to uh, recognize and prevent trafficking. So for uh, over 14 years, I have been involved in educating children about the dangers of trafficking. Our youth, when informed and engaged, can act as the, uh, as the first line of defense against this crime. So contributing to SDG 16, peace, justice, and a strong institutions. So the efforts of women and youth and the grassroots level are powerful catalysts for change. By working in their communities, they are addressing issues directly at the source of developing sustainable solutions that can be scaled up. So from urban to slum to rural villages, these uh, efforts are contributing to multiple SDGs, including SDG 4, quality education, SDG 2, zero hunger, and SDG 3, good health and oil bay. So uh, to achieve the SDG by 2030, we must ensure that women and youth are not just participants, but leaders in this journey. We must provide them with the tools, resources, and platforms to share their ideas and implement their solutions. 
So that journey towards sustainable development is a shared one. Women and uh, youth bring unique strength and perspectives that are vital for this journey. By uh, harnessing their pot uh, potential, we can create a world that, that is just equitable and sustainable for all. So let us continue to empower women and youth work together and ensure that no one is left behind. And I'm working uh, uh, from uh, uh, my school life and um, uh, it was very great to work with the grassroots rebels. I saw the sorrows of them and uh, it is like unbearable. Uh, so last I want to share on, um, there are so many of experience that I have, but I want to share just last one that uh, a 14 years old mother is crying beside her three years daughter who is died because uh, he is sexually abused by a uh, 60 years old neighborhood. So I was like, I am, <laughs> I am like, uh, what can I say? Oh, oh, okay. So um, it was like so traumatized uh, for me and I couldn't sleep uh, several days. But so what we can do that we can raise awareness and educate everyone that uh, to uh, stop these things. And now a uh, very, uh, uh, very uh, um, recent, I shifted from Bangladesh to USA, but I am very much hopeful to continuing my work from here so that world can uh, have a good um, live for together. So thank you everyone. And um, thank you for uh, uh, giving me this uh, opportunity to say something here. Wow, thank you so much, Tanya, for your amazing work for throughout decades, actually, in uh, Bangladesh and uh, raising awareness for gender equality. And you touch so many topics also, um, yeah, educating the youth, preventing human trafficking and all kinds of things. So, wow, I'm really impressed. And thank you so much for your hard work and, uh, and showcasing it here. Uh, thank you also for leaving your uh, contact details. And uh, we hope that we can have some more discussion a little bit later. Thank you so much for being here. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. I'm blessed to be here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. We're lucky to have you. So we're going to go to our next speaker. And that's Mrs. Irene uh, Schmuttermeyer, uh, currently based in Vienna, Austria, originally from Ukraine. She's a marketing strategist and analytical specialist and an advocate for peace. And today she will uh, share something on uh, environment. So Irene, thank you so much for being here and the floor is yours. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to speak. My name is Irene Schmuttermeyer and uh, I'm a representative of uh, Women for uh, Peace Federation in Austria and active participant in the Creative Society Project. As a socially active person, I uh, investigate the topic of climate change. Let me share the screen. Hope you see it well. Yes, fine. So uh, in the Creative Society projects, this is one of the main concerns that we study the climate change. And what we do basically, we inform people in social media about the uh, importance, about the seriousness of climate change. And uh, we publish on a daily basis uh, videos from different parts of the world, uh, which climate disasters took place in one day. We believe that m the more people will know about it, they will be informed and we will be able to resolve it faster. And for now, everything uh, we do with humanity obviously is not enough because the ocean is sitting up, the temperature is rising, for example, I live here in Vienna five years, and this summer is the hottest I've ever experienced. It's getting hotter and hotter every year. And for example, when ocean temperature rises, a lot of uh, moisture evaporates to the atmosphere. And the hotter atmosphere gets, it can hold more moisture. Why well, I'm telling you this? Exactly because uh, the atmosphere is heating up. There are situations happened, which we experienced a week ago, when there was a month worth of precipitation 
fall in, uh, in one hour. And we had in Vienna streets flooded. And there are situations like this all over the world. And it will uh, be uh, going on more and more often because uh, uh, it's all heating up. So uh, what solution do we suggest as a creative society? We talk about unification of scientists, the fact that we need to study this more. We need to do something else, something else regarding this. We need to inform other people. And we raise these topics on the series of forum Global Crisis. And in April, um, I was able um, to hold a presentation thanks to uh, Women for Peace Federation office and thanks to um, Youth and Students for Peace Federation. Uh, we were offering one of the solutions that the Creative Society suggests. For example, these are um, atmospheric water generators. Uh, if we start to take water from air, we would take excess CO2 and we would clean the atmosphere and um, the ocean would start cleaning up as well. We would, uh, the microplastic would disappear and ocean would stop heating up that fast. So actually by uh, switching to taking water from the atmosphere and not from groundwaters, we would be able to contribute in a good way to the climate change we would reduce the heating. And uh, there was as well a documentary published uh, on the Creative Society platform about uh, water generation that were presented the modern uh, installations that uh, already many people used all over the world. And you can find this by Googling up atmospheric water generators. And uh, as I mentioned before, I'm from Ukraine and the topic of war is also really close to me. And uh, I, uh, from that part of the Ukraine, when the, where the war started 10 years ago as a refugee, and uh, this topic is really, I think is really close to the unification, uh, um, Peace Federation. And um, I want to share with you the documentary that I stumbled upon. It was published uh, mo a month ago, and um, I was actually shocked. This information was presented that serious investigation going on by independent journalists about um, uh, who is, stands behind world tragedies such as 9-11, Waco case, war, uh, Russia and Ukraine, and so on. And uh, this um, uh, person you see right now on the screen, uh, this is um, this. There was public announced by a national security expert, Igun Chalakian. He's a federal lobbyist in the U.S. Congress and White House. He was working in the White House with the four former U.S. presidents. So he shared that there is actually uh, secret services um, investigation going on in the U.S. and. Uh, also, the, uh, those methods and what uh, they were able to to find also was mentioned in this documentary. It's called The Impact. It was shared the puzzle coding method they use on teenagers by publishing articles in the mass media or TV. And basically uh, then this um, uh, children experience mel mental, mental disorders and that contributes to school shooting. Such situations that we have in England uh, recently, in Vienna, uh, terror attack prevented. Uh, these are all chain of uh, like one events, and uh, we usually associate Muslims with terrorists. And um, it's actually for someone really beneficial for us to think that way, to have for us to have an image that Muslims are terrorists, and because uh, they have certain goals, they want to start a war. And uh, I find this really important to share. Um, so uh, because as well, um, this organization, they call themselves anti-cultists. And what they do, they usually uh, take like free movements who, for example, have certain beliefs and they uh, label them as cult or sect. And this actually violates democracy. Uh, this violates presumption of innocence, freedom of speech. I'm aware that there was also a situation with Family Federation for Peace in Japan where, where there was called Unification Church and their members were prosecuted 
the same as uh, Jehovah Witnesses was prosecuted and Falun Gong uh, movement as well. So I cannot explain uh, all the details in one minute, but there is actually eight hour documentary that I highly recommend you to take a look at. I believe that it's really important because uh, we need to protect our rights and freedoms. And uh, we actually spread the unity and peace and it's really important uh, to spread this awareness and uh, protect our peace and unity. I thank everyone who was speaking today. It was really interesting to hear from you and I thank you for giving me opportunity to speak. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much, Irene, for your very uh, clear and, and uh, how to say, a very uh, substantial presentation about uh, our environment, but also about all the political things behind the scene. Thank you for also sharing this uh, documentary. I don't know where we can find it, but um, I'm looking forward to studying it. So thank you so much for your great presentation and your great work. Thank you for being here with us in Vienna. And um, so as time ticks, we're gonna go to the next speaker. And that is uh, Mrs. Anais Carolina Vega Montalvan. Uh, welcome this evening, Anais. Uh, we're very happy and delighted that you can be here. Um, I, uh, you're still a student and I understand that you will be talking uh, on uh, also how to take care of Mother Earth and uh, how important education is. So uh, we're very happy and please the floor is yours. Hello, thank you so much. Um, first of all, if you can hear my dog barking, I'm so sorry, he's with me right now. So he promised he's going to just be quiet. Okay, so good afternoon, good night, everybody. Thank you so much for inviting me to this session. I'm so grateful to be able to participate. And thank you, Merle, for inviting me because we met in Cyprus last year. So it's such an honor for me to be here. So since I've been kind of sick this week, um, I couldn't prepare like a, a PowerPoint, but um, I would like to share some reflections about this topic. So um, I'm a biologist, I just finished my studies. And even if that sounds like I'm an expert in the area of ecology, I'm not because I decided to focus on lab, on researching. But um, what I learned is that you don't need to be an expert to be able to take care of our planet. I just learned that there are so many things that are in my hands, starting with educating myself on the importance of biodiversity and discovering what we stand to lose, to lose if um, we don't take care of this of, of our planet. And the truth is that if we want to take care of something, first of all, we have to understand it. So um, I'm Anais Carolina and I'm from Peru, but I've been living in Spain for more than 20 years. But even though I've been here almost my whole life, um, I'm still very connected to my country, thanks to my parents. They always wanted me to know about our culture, our food, traditions, and so on. And something that I learned about is our mythology, the Inca mythology. So according to this mythology, there are four Quechua cosmological principles that are water, earth, sun, and moon. And moon and uh, this mythology affirmed that Pachamama is their origin. So Pachamama, Mother Earth in English, was a goddess of fertility who was in charge of proceeding over the sowing and the harvest, thus protecting the well-being of humans and provided them with water and food. So the humans, the humans, um, really grateful for this, decided to take care of the Pachamama and pay tribute to her, celebrating different rituals. Um, it's really interesting um, this meeting is celebrated this month because this is the month where Pachamama, uh, where people used to tend to celebrate rituals for Pachamama. Of course, they do it now in a different way. There's no way they're going to sacrifice animals or something like that. They just found another way to pay tribute to our Mother Earth. 
which I think that it's really interesting is that Fatimama was not known as a creator god. He was known as a protector and provider capable of making life possible. I'm really thankful to my parents because they really wanted me to know about our past and about um, this kind of mythology that keeps me connected to my country. And I realized that it doesn't matter if you believe or not in this kind of mythology. What's really important is what we can learn from it. And even though I have my faith and I have my beliefs, I love learning about other religion, religions and other cultures because I feel it's a beautiful way to connect to people. So it's the same thing with different mythologies with me. I'm still in my 20s and I think uh, my generation is really involved in like different topics right now, but I think it is not enough. Um, I think there's still so many things that we have to do but we have to start educating ourselves and most importantly, educating the next generation because they are the future of our planet. Um, I think that we are at a time to stop, to think, and maybe even to learn from Asian beliefs or mythologies. We have to be open to educate ourselves and have to understand that, that we must to be grateful um, for all that Mother Earth gave us. We should learn how to take care of it, appreciate it, value it, living a sigh or eagerness to want to control everything all the time. Because biodiversity provides us with a great variety of food, fresh water, fertile soils, medicines, raw materials that we can use in different ways. Um, I think it's really important that we have to learn from the mistakes that we have made as humanity, like the humankind from what we have done in the past and find a way to fix it and make sure that our future generations won't make the same mistakes. But we also have to remember all that we have done well so far and keep working on it. What I learned in these last years is to connect to Mother Earth and it is so beautiful. And I just realized that nature, actually nature speaks to us. We just want we just have to want and we just have to learn how to listen to her. As we all know, we have no other earth to go. So it is our responsibility to take care of it. And it is our responsibility to educate ourselves and educate our generations and why it is important, why climate change is so important, why we have to be really responsible um, in the way we produce food and the way we consume like animals and this kind of different um, foods. So yeah, I just wanted to share this little reflection. Thank you so much, all of you for sharing all of your reflections. Um, especially I wanted to just finish my presentation, but especially wanted to, to, um, to thank uh, the mother Andorra Rojas um, I really, really, really enjoyed your presentation and I would love to cooperate with you because I think mental health is such an important thing that we should focus right now. I have an interesting story been suffering with different uh, mental health issues for the last 10 years and it is so it makes me so happy and so emotional um, seeing like two different generations working together to try to help like people and try to help different generations. So thank you so much. And yeah, that's all, thank you. Thank you so much, Anais, for sharing your reflections and also for pinpointing the importance of mental health, indeed. Um, I'm hoping that we'll have some, some time to discuss. There is, a, I think we're doing good with time. So I'm happy about that. Thank you so much for your reflection and for being here and your dog did a great job <laughs> being silent. So that's amazing. Um, yes, and uh, it's time to um, welcome our last speaker. Uh, she has pre uh, prepared a video message as she's traveling uh, home. Um, so um, she is the Secretary General of the Women's Federation for World Peace uh, of the Asia Pacific based in the Philippines. So let's uh, watch her video message for today.
Oh, and maybe I might add that uh, after this oh, internet, a year ago. I will say later. We were hit by a super typhoon and I can honestly say we weren't prepared for the effects. I experienced it myself. Some are experiencing it right now. We are experiencing an urgent crisis and the real damage is being done to the globe as a result of people's disconnection from the natural world. So we need to regenerate spaces. We need to regenerate lives. I am Christine Rose Bulayo. I am the Governor General of 10K Heroes United. And today I would like to share to you our journey to the 21st century Eden through our permaculture literacy program towards holistic and happy communities for a healthy planet. In Bohol, uh, according to the provincial agriculturists, there are 700,000 families that are stuck in their lands without common plants. So that is a whooping 51% of the population. And in 2021, Bohol has reported that 26% of households are below the food threshold compared to 2018's 21%. So this clearly shows that the poverty incidence in the island province of Bohol has been amplified by climate change. So the onslaught of the recent super typhoon Rai in Bohol was enabled by climate change and it uncovered fundamental issues in food security, sustainability, planet healing, and man's lack of interest in innovative farming or gardening. So with these pressing issues in our community, we envision a revolutionary education of heart and character, a climate adaptation initiative that addresses them from the ground up, and that is the permaculture. And in its essence, permaculture is not just an agricultural practice. It is a lifestyle. It is living each day, thinking, uh, knowing nature, being one with nature, and working with nature, not against it. So permaculture is the linchpin, and this is our way to build our 21st century Garden of Eden. So our goal is to raise leaders of heart and character and to mobilize a critical mass of young people and families to advocate for the holistic well-being of people and promote permaculture as a means of promoting ecosystem restoration, food security, and the regenerative healing of the planet. But an alarming report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, indicates great seriousness of immediate action. So about 90 climate scientists from 40 nations conclude that if humans don't take rapid coordinated action to keep global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2040, the effects are irreversible. So extreme droughts, destructive wildfires, catastrophic flooding, deadly hurricanes, and widespread famines, all of which we are witnessing more frequently now, will no longer be rare events, but rather will become um, seasonal markers as predictable as the shifting of the leaves. I know it's common to experience momentary paralysis in response to this very scary news, when we finally understand that we're up against the size of the struggle that lies ahead. So it never seems like there is enough time, no matter how much we have. But the good news is that we have the climate solutions needed and that they work. So we need to start now. So our permaculture literacy program is youth-led and the first in the province. So this is our permaculture training center, which is 90% complete, which shall house aspiring permaculture trainees. And we also have our permaculture program, which is a working model that can be used and can transcend to any type of ecosystem wherever you are in the world. And this program offers an intensive yet flexible six month education course and feedback grounded skill sets in between sessions. So the curriculum is meticulously curated based on the long years of experiences of uh, permaculture experts. So the design and database are tailored to biomimic the biodiversity in the local ecosystem. So we help you in recreating the 21st century Garden of Eden with the integration of earth citizenry, climate resiliency, and regenerative healing of the planet. Also, our young engineers in Bohol are doing the Moonlight Solar Lamps project. 
which aims to address the critical need for sustainable and clean energy solutions in the Philippines, especially in areas affected by the powerful Typhoon Odette in the Visayas and Mindanao regions. So the project's primary objective is to provide solar lamps that can both illuminate homes and charge mobile phones, benefiting underprivileged communities and the youth in the rural areas. So here, our WFWPI UN representative in Vienna and the author of the Moonlight Solar Lamp um, project. So these are Mrs. Marley Blaschke together with Mr. Jess Juliano. They met with the representatives of the Provincial Government Office of Pangasinan, Philippines. They met with Mr. Von Mark Mendoza and the Chief of the Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office and the Provincial Engineering Office to discuss the proposed tripartite partnership between the WWP Austria, 10K Heroes United, and the province of Pangasinan on the implementation of the Moonlight, Moonlight Solar Lamp project. So Mrs. Blaschke and Mr. Holiano presented the completed prototype of the Moonlight Solar Lamp. Also, the meeting was made possible by the gracious support of Ambassadress Evangelina Lourdes Arroyo Bernas, the Philippines Ambassador to Austria, with the coordination of the Department of Foreign Affairs in the Philippines. Also, just last June this year, we met with municipal agriculturists in different towns of Bohol, and we got to share some of our permaculture practices, and they attended sessions that will help them create their own sustainable and regenerative projects in their own town. And right now, 10 of them are granted scholarships for the UPOU, the UP Open University uh, permaculture course, and they are uh, on their ongoing class right now. So by 2025, our goal is to multiply to 40 new permaculture teachers and, of course, to finish our permaculture hub and for it to become a leading learning site in the region. Also for the institutionalization of the permaculture literacy education to basic and higher education, as also to the technical and vocational authority. So it is so amazing how the transformation of heart and character is also present. And I realized that through healing nature, we can also heal ourselves. So undeniably, we have met uh, many problems along the way. But permaculture taught us to turn problems into opportunities. So just like this ray of the sun, hope is beaming upon us. We should take every chance we could to heal and protect our local landscapes. Because at the end of the day, we have only one home, only one earth. So between fear and inspiration, we choose the latter. Let's walk this road together. So reflected on your screen are our contact details. Thank you so much for listening. Kamsamida, maraming salamat po. Thank you so much, Christine Rose Blaya, for your video message. And um, yes, we are sorry that you couldn't be here live, uh, but the great work that you're doing in the Philippines um, with the Women's Federation there, and uh, also um, in cooperation with Mrs. Murley. Actually, our initiator of the meet and greet um, um, sessions, actually. So um, she will also share uh, some closing remarks uh, very soon. Mm, but I first would like to mention that we'll have a group picture just after her closing remarks. So I just wanted to already alert you. And if possible, it would be great if everyone could open their cameras after the closing remarks so we can make a beautiful picture. So if it's possible, then, um, then uh, yeah, let's see. I see that uh, my other colleague of, the, uh, of our UN team is uh, sharing closing remarks, Mrs. Renate Amsbauer. We're very happy that you're here tonight as well, Renate. And uh, please, uh, the closing remarks for tonight. Yes, dear friends and colleagues, friends and sisters, I must really say, 
we shifted this point of the program because uh, Mary Sokrila, she was speaking in the beginning, as there was not a video from our international president, Moriko Hori, but it was a written speech. So she said she doesn't want to speak twice. So she gave me the chance to give the closing remarks, which is a great joy for me. And I really, I must say this um, meet and greet, every time it is not easy to put it together. It needs the help of many in the back and in the front. But I really must say uh, it is an amazing uh, opportunity to reach, to reach and to listen and to hear so many inspiring thoughts because we always hope that this meet and greet is not just for today and for tonight, but it really should be the opportunity to learn from each other. And I'm very happy to hear if you say, oh, I want, can we stay in contact together? Like now, this is so touching on the same topic, like Marie Zelda and her daughter speaking about mental health, then uh, Carolina speaking about mental health, permaculture, it's healing us to deal with nature. I think Maria Real also can really support this. And even I just have some flowers in front of my window, <laughs> there's no ground that is mine. But uh, the nature is really giving us strength and is healing us. So I think there's so many topics and we really want to encourage to stay connected to each other. We can help with this. In I think all of you have the email addresses of at least Merli and myself and Maria Riel. Uh, I'm very, very happy to be part of it again. I thank the speakers for their preparation because to be short is the most difficult. You have to say the, every one of you can share and talk for one hour at least. And uh, But to make it short, to make it only last five to seven minutes, this is really a big task. Thank you so much that you managed because therefore we could listen to all of you. I thank you also the, the listeners that you came and joined in and listened, but also learned. I myself, I learned so much. And also, Shruti, you will come to Vienna. You are somehow halfway to Vienna. So we're really excited to make plans together. Thank you for your contribution about peace and bringing people together, young people, to be ready to have an opportunity to change their view of thinking. And this is really, it was hard work that you did. I listened these two days, not all of the time, but most of the time. It was really, really uh, hard, but it was amazing, the result that came. I was not in Lebanon, but I'm very happy to hear more from you about that. And we are very happy to have you somehow with us at least online uh, for the last part of the year. Thank you also for Tanya. It's amazing that you, this point, to we so easily feel victim, things like also Christine Pulayo, she said, yeah, things are happening and we feel, oh, we are victim of this, we are, we are helpless. But to turn it around and help people to feel we are the change also. We can we can bring the change, and especially women have so many ideas that have not been brought into practice until now. So we all have to help together to make this world into a better place very soon. Thank you very much for all you shared. I hope I did not forget. I cannot repeat everything, but I really, it was amazing to listen to you. And please come up to us or try to meet we will do something about mental health in Vienna. And as it is, if it's hybrid, we can have people from outside. They don't have to live here. They can join in. Thank you very, very much. And yeah, back to the moderator. Thank you, Kyung Yin, for supporting us. You are like a backbone of our events as a moderator, brilliant and young. And young. Thank you very much for your help and support. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, dear Renate. Thank you also to, to the whole team. Made it possible also Irmgard and Lily behind the scenes. Uh, thank you. And our initiator, um, Merle Blaschke, and also, of course, our director, um, Dr. Maria Riel. So uh, as I mentioned, we want to close this evening uh, with a group picture. And afterwards, maybe we can take still a few questions. Um, so if everyone would be so kind to open the, their cameras, then um, 
I think uh, Lily will make a picture or I will just remove my spotlights. So, so I see quite some faces. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. I think everyone who can open their cameras may perhaps have uh, put their cameras on by now. I see a lot of beautiful faces and a beautiful baby. <laughs> okay. So Lily, maybe you can take the lead that we can know how we, when we have to smile. Perfect. So I am getting ready now. One, two, three, and that is done. Let me just have a look at it. Okay, mm -hmm. one more. Save and back to the screen. Everybody look into your camera and let's smile. Oh, Tanya with your baby, lovely. So <laughs> one, two, three, go. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. I think I think it's turned out great. We'll probably get the picture sometime soon. And um, yes, thank you again for all our beautiful speakers and especially for all the work that you have been doing uh, all this time. And I just uh, I think nobody uh, noted a question in the chat until some minutes ago. So if anyone has a comment or a question for a speaker or a speaker that would like to add something more. Please feel free to open your mic and just go ahead or raise your hand. Let's see. We could be a bit spontaneous in a way. Yes, Marisel, go ahead. It's actually not a question, but uh, an invitation. Like we mentioned at our presentation, Renate, we are very ready to organize something on uh, mental health day. So mark the date. I saw that some of you, our dear moderator has commented that she will support, she will promote and be there. So you can be there if we really do it with uh, Women's Federation for World Peace and all the organizations that we know of. A uh, hybrid would be great. So please, let's do something together. Let's continue the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Let's do that. We will get more information and will we also keep uh, the people posted? Yes, let's do that. I see that uh, Merli is spotlighted as a speaker, perhaps. No, I'm just going through and looking for everybody. We can get one shot with all the speakers before I play the music. Ah, okay. So who have I still got to look for? Rachel is now here. And uh, oops, sorry. I think also Tanya, or is she not here anymore? Tanya but has no the camera. camera on. I'll start video. I'll <laughs> start video. Okay, that's it. Well, then I'll just do one more screenshot and Oh, Tanya is there too now with uh, with this, with uh, with her camera on. And spotlight, thank you. Good. One more then. Then now, ready, smile. <laughs> Beautiful. Lovely. Good. Then that's uh, it. I can play yeah. the music to the end. And yeah, perhaps we would. I would like to hear maybe from Shruti or Tanya, or who would you like to make okay. another comment before we say goodbye? Um, okay, Shruti, you can go ahead, please. Please go ahead. Uh, it is uh, it is a nice experience uh, to share my work and to know about all of uh, about your work, great working. So actually together we are the better world, right? So thank you for the uh, program. Oh, and uh, uh, we are here like um, uh, elder to younger. So this is the change basically. We are all here to work together. 
and i'm sorry for the uh, last inconvenience i was feeding my <laughs> youngest one so that's why sometimes i was in uh, uh, behind the screen but uh, <laughs> the experience is amazing and thank you for all these things thank you uh, you're muted um kyungin yes i noted Sorry, and Shruti, maybe some last words. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, yes, I think uh, one of the best things, um, the easiest thing that anybody could say and observe out of such great platforms is um, no matter in what um, um, issue you're working at, be it mental health or be it peace building, be it youth empowerment or climate security, climate change, I think the way that we can work together and come together and work in partnerships, uh, creatively work together, is what um, will bring um, a more sustainable, long-lasting solution to the issues that we're working right. So um, mental health needs to be focused to prevent sexual abuse and violence against women. It needs There needs to be a lot of investment in that you need to work on youth empowerment to to be it mental health or be it um, uh, protecting women and girls against violence and abuse or you are using youth empowerment and the capacity of young people to voice for climate change and uh, empowering the society i think everything works hand in hand and i'm really thankful to the organizers for making this wonderful uh, for people of all different uh, passions coming together. Um, thank you, King, for your wonderful moderation. And um, thank you, Marley, for this amazing leadership. Um, I'm really excited to also um, work on some capacity building and training um, at the Vienna office that we've been uh, discussing about. And we look forward to all your partnerships and uh, for working together on this as well. So thank you so much. Um, I hope we stay in touch and we uh, can meet sometimes uh, soon in person too. Thank yes. you. That would be amazing. And also for all other participants, thank you so much, Jashruti. And for all other participants, if you would like to have anyone's contact, please feel free to approach us. We will provide it uh, with a happy heart. And let's... Uh, let's uh, keep communicating and work together for a better world and fulfilling those sustainable development goals. So thank you so much. And uh, we'll, we'll close with some music and see you next time for our meet and greet. We will keep you posted. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Have a nice very evening, much. everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. It's just safe, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> it's spielt a CEO, glaube ich. It's cool. Please help. Bitte mach mir dieses Sinnwetter auf.
Have a good night, everyone. See you next time. Bye-bye.